Hey everyone, it's Heidi Scott with DIY Dreaming. I hope that you're having a beautiful Saturday. In this video tutorial, we're gonna talk about some of my absolute most favorite things. First, I love tarnished silver platters. I love them even more when I can find them at my local thrift store for only four or five dollars. I love vintage buttons. That's the second thing. I love all the, oh my gosh, there's just so many different kinds. Um, but I love those and you can find those everywhere. And then I love working with magnets. Specifically, where are they? These little button magnets I'm gonna show you. So I'm gonna show you a couple different things that you can do. Um, oops. Oh, so sorry, it's really loud. That are <clears throat> super affordable. Uh, it's a great way to reuse and repurpose things so they don't just end up in a landfill, which that is important to me. And also, it's a great way to preserve some memories that you might have. So, let's jump right in and um, let's start by talking about the platters because that's really the base of the projects that I'm gonna show you. Sorry, it's a little noisy. Okay, so I swear every, every, every time I'm in my local Goodwill, I buy silver platters. They look like this. And these just happen, I have four, five of them here that I've painted. They almost look all the same, but they're different. Um, I've painted them with just black paint in the center. Um, and then, I've stenciled them with different things and then I've washed it off and sometimes I've needed to add a little bit more black paint, but you can just keep using these things over and over and over in all different kinds of ways. So, um, the first thing I wanna talk about though with these platters is a science lesson. Before I do that, let me just say hello to everyone who's on. <clears throat> Thank you for joining me. As you're hopping on, tell me where you're watching from. Tell me in the comments if you've ever done any of these things that we're gonna be doing today. Okay, so here's the science lesson. First of all, I wanna just show you something. Okay, <clears throat> let's see. So this right here is something I'm gonna talk to you about in a minute. It's a vintage button. I don't know when it's from, the 20s or 30s. It has glass inside of it. It's getting dark in here and I don't have access to my lights today. And then it has a button magnet on the back. Okay, so magnets will stick to some of these silver platters and not to others, all right? So it's not gonna stick to this one, no matter what I do. Let's see if it will stick to this one. Yes, firmly. Let's check out this one. No, no way. Uh, okay, so why would a magnet stick to some kinds of silver platters and not to others? <clears throat> well, I want you to know that I was terrible in science in high school and middle school and elementary school and college. Science is not my strength. So I just did a quick little Google search. The metals that attract magnets are known as ferromagnetic metals. Do you understand that? These metals are made up of billions of individual atoms that have magnetic properties, which means magnets will stick to them firmly. Some examples of metals that are magnetic, magnetic are iron, cobalt, nickel, steel, because it's mostly iron, <clears throat> manganese, gadolinium, and lodestone. Some metals such as iron are referred to as magnetically soft because they become strong temporary magnets when you hold a magnet near them, but they lose some or all of their magnetism when you remove the magnet. The magnet. Okay, metals that do not attract <clears throat> magnets. In their natural states, metals such as aluminum, brass, copper, gold, lead, and silver do not attract magnets because they are weak metals. So, what does that mean? It says in the next sentence, it says, however, you can add 
add properties such as iron or steel to the weak metals to make them stronger. So if I'm reading this right, the, the trays that, have, that probably have more sil actual silver in them are the better ones, I think. I mean, they're, I guess they would be more valuable if you were gonna melt it down. They are not magnetic. What you want are the ones that are not as nice and not as much actual silver. So there you go, there's your science lesson. Um, <clears throat> did you know that? I'm sure we have some scientists who are watching, or maybe not. Okay, so um, this one does, and here's another one, this is the one we're gonna work with. This one does attract magnets, okay? But you know what, before I do that, I think I wanna, Talk to you. No, I'm going to do this first. So stay with me to the very end because I'm going to show you a couple of things that I made that are hanging in my family room all year long. And they're gorgeous mother of pearl buttons that I formed into two different shapes. And I used hot glue to attach them to a piece of cardboard with some pretty fabric over it. And um, anyway, so stay with me to the very end if you're curious to see that. Okay, so um, this is obviously a credier piece of silver platter because the magnets will stick to it. So what I want to talk to you about are making button magnets, all right? Um, I happen to love vintage buttons and I have several boxes of <clears throat> all different kinds of um, vintage buttons. Um, some of them are these metal ones, which are so pretty. I, I wanna pick one and show you an example of what you can do. That's pretty. Well, I'll get two in case I'm not able to take that one apart. And then <coughs> here are some mother of pearl that are gray, sort of a grayish, whitish color. Okay, so um, with the ones that are metal, they're almost all gonna have some type of a metal shank on the back. A shank is this piece right here. And that's how it's attached to the piece of clothing. So if you're gonna wanna put this with hot glue on a magnet, you're gonna need to do something about that shank. And <clears throat> what I have just done in the past is using a pair of metal clippers or whatever, I have just clipped that off. <laughs> this one's really hard. Some of them, some of the metal buttons, that one's not coming off, um, are actually plastic that looks like metal and they're easier to get the shanks off. Okay, well I can't get the shanks off at either one of these buttons that I chose. That's probably why I haven't used them before. So let's just pretend, okay? So what you're gonna wanna do is use something to clip this shank off. Let's see if I can do it with this. Ah, there we go. The problem was that I just didn't have a hold of it good enough, okay? And then um, you're just gonna wanna get some of these magnetic buttons, but here's the trick. Uh, if you know what platter you're gonna put it on, I suggest you attach the magnet first to the platter because different sides of magnets <clears throat> attract or repel and you don't want to uh, use a bunch of beautiful buttons if they aren't going to stick to your uh, to your silver platter golly i'm having a hard time today getting these apart I'm apart with my clippers without cutting myself. <laughs> this is ridiculous. Okay, here we go. Okay, so here's a good example. If I put this on this way, it seems pretty solid. If I put it on that way, it's not as solid. So just test it out <clears throat> and put it on your platter. We can move it later. 
And then you're just gonna use a little dab of hot glue. Where did my button go? Here it is. To put your button on it. And voila, it's the exact same thing when you're working with any of these um, mother of pearl buttons, which these really are my favorite. And once upon a time, I had a huge collection of them, but then I made these two things over here that I'm gonna show you in a few minutes. And I haven't, I found most of them at this antique show. Um, there was a button lady there. And, um, and then when, one time when we went to Colorado to ski, there happened to be a little fabric store in that town that had tons of these beautiful mother of pearl buttons in all kinds of shapes and sizes. So with these, you don't usually have to cut anything off. Where's that one magnet that I just lost? Here it is. So let's do the same thing. Let's test it and that side's stronger. And let's put a little blob of hot glue on here and then stick my button on it. Okay, so this is what you get. All right, so imagine this idea. You, you go to your um, china closet, if you have one, or the place where you store just different serving things or things that were your parents and you have some super tarnished silver platters in there that aren't getting any use that you might as well just donate. I suggest instead that you paint them with either this color black or this is, this is my most favorite ever platter that I've ever, ever, ever done. This one, look at what it looked like before. This one I just painted with a creamy color and then I um, stenciled it with a magnolia stencil, which if anyone wants the link for this one that says, I still remember the days I prayed for the things I have now, just let me know in the comments and I'll be glad to get you the direct link to that. But anyways, and then I made these flowers that I hot glued on there. Um, I've also made platters where I painted them with a really beautiful navy blue color, but I didn't find those when I was getting ready to go live today. So um, if you're just, if you're not using them, if they're tarnished, you don't feel like polishing them up, you might as well just donate them, then you should try this project. Paint them with a couple of coats of your choice, black, navy, cream, I mean, whatever color you like. And then let's make something with magnets and buttons. So, um, and this is a set, this could be a sentimental thing. Do you have some clothing of a family member that's passed, some like suit jackets or a, a military coat or a, a big coat or something? The men's things always have these beautiful big buttons. Or do you have some things that belong to a female family member that's passed? <clears throat> or do you have a jar of buttons that was your grandmother's and great-grandmother's? If you do, I am so envious of you because I didn't have that, but I did always wish I did. <laughs> so um, then you could just hot glue some of these button magnets on the back of them and then let's make a shape, okay? So I'm going to, I think you can see just fine, except I did want to tell you if these comments right here are making it so you can't see, you can, you can either swipe them to the side and they'll disappear or swipe them up. It depends on what kind of a device you're working with. Okay, so let's make a Christmas tree. How about that? Um, all right, and I'm going to start. This is super easy. And I have a whole, I, I was so glad I was able to find this because I've been looking for it for a while. I have a whole bag of metal vintage buttons that have magnets on them that we're gonna use. 
all different things. Like this one has a moose on it. Um, this looks like a military type button. I have lots of these pretty ones that have glass in them. Those are the ones that I would buy when I would go to this antique thing. Um, this one is just a silver button that has a dent in it. <laughs> Anyways, okay, so let's start building a Christmas tree. Stay with me because I want you guys to see these other things that I did. And I have a beautiful mother of pearl one that's also on magnets right here that I want to show you too. But let's do this first. So we're just going to build out. I started with one button at the top that is like a rhinestone kind of deal. All right. So I did one and then two and then three. And each row I'm using a similar kind of a button. So this one's going to be like military looking. I don't want them to be identical, but... And I can fiddle around later to get them so that they're all going the same. So that the, the images on them are going the same direction. Okay? And then the next row would have five. Let's put something interesting in the center. Oops. Oopsie. And some bigger buttons to the side of it. Hmm. Oh, I've got magnets sticking to the back of my silver platter. There's another one. So you get the point. Let me just do another row. And then we'll look at it. And then I'll show you something that I did in a um, buttons uh, format that had um, Mother of Pearl. And then we'll get to this thing that I love so much that's off here to my side. Okay, so I would fiddle around with my button selection, but you get the point. And then you can just put it in a plate stand. And when Christmas is over, you can take this down. You can make whatever shape you want with this idea. You could make a snowflake, you could make a cross. Um, it's totally up to you. So let me now show you the, um, the silver, it's a smaller silver tray that I made last year using the magnets and some mother of pearl buttons. Um, and then stay with me because off to this other side over here, I have the two things that I love the most. Okay, so let's put this guy aside. And this is what I was talking about. These are mother of pearl, which way is that? Mother of Pearl buttons that I've hot glued these magnets to them, just like this one, but these were all whitish. And this has been sitting up on my shelf here in my craft room since last year. I can't even remember when we did this. It might have been around Easter time, but whenever I'm ready to, I can just remove everything. Although I don't think I will, because I think this is so pretty. Um, and this shape of a cross, I just Googled um, different cross shapes. Whenever I have a question, I tend to just go right to the internet to ask. And I want, because I didn't want just a plain cross. I wanted something interesting. And these, this other thing over here is really interesting too. Um, and so I printed it and made like a little pattern. And then I just put my buttons on there. What do you guys think? Do you love this? So the trays are, you may already have one that you're not even using that, heck, you should repurpose it and make something beautiful for your home. Or you might have to go to a thrift store or a garage sale. If you keep looking, you'll find them. And um, that's one of the first things I look for when I go to my favorite Goodwill is trays. And the last couple times I've been there, I haven't had good luck. Uh, but I tell you what, I have gotten some absolutely stunning trays. Like, the, here's one over here. Let me just grab it. 
Uh, it doesn't have buttons on it, but I've, I've been able to pick up so many beautiful trays. And I personally like the tarnished look. Some of them have handles, some of them don't. This just has a transfer on it. But isn't this a pretty tray? So look at your, at your Goodwill, at, at whatever thrift stores you have. Um, ask your, if your parents are still living or your grandparents or uh, a relative that might have some of that that but they're not using, ask them if you can have it. Uh, I mean, really, why not? Um, so then the first thing you're gonna do is you're just gonna paint it. Uh, as far as the buttons go, um, you can buy them on Etsy. I have done that before. I have found them at my little antique mall that's just around the corner from my house, although they were kind of overpriced, and I that bothers me. And there weren't a lot of great quality buttons. What I mostly want are these mother of pearl. Oh, this is a pretty one that I layered. Two different buttons. It's a big mother of pearl. Look how pretty that is. And then I put another kind of a button, I don't know what this is, celluloid or something, in the center. Oh, and this, I did the same thing, but with three. Look how fancy I am. There's three different buttons glued on there. So, um, so look around, look through the, if you have any old clothing, a lot of times ladies clothes have just a lot of decorations and stuff that you could use. And then if you have to, ask around or last resort, look online and see what you can purchase. But you want them to be, you don't want a whole bunch of plastic buttons that you could cut off of today's clothes. You want them to be something, um, something nice. Okay, so now let's go to the thing that I love the most. This is hanging in my family room and last year, I changed it out at Christmas time. I'll show you what I changed it to. And then when Christmas was over, I put it back together and it's, this is like one of my most favorite things. I just stumbled into the idea of it. I even stumbled into this gorgeous frame, you're gonna love it, that I found at my local Goodwill for like $4. I can't believe somebody didn't want it. Look at this. Is this gorgeous or what? Oh my gosh, I love it. Okay, so I just took a bunch of the smaller mother of pearl buttons that I had and I used hot glue to attach them to this piece of cardboard, or wood actually it was, that had some, no it was cardboard, that had um, some of this, it's like a canvas, but it's nubbier than the canvas from Walmart. It was a nicer canvas fabric. Look how gorgeous that is. And when people come over, I get comments about it all, all, all the time. This, in my opinion, is an heirloom that I hope one of my children will want it because I, I just absolutely love it. Okay, so here's a close up. Now let me show you what I switched it out to. The back of it, could this be any easier? It has these little things that you just twist. It's not really an old frame. It's just a gorgeous one. And then it had this little piece of wood here. This is how fancy I do things at my house. Not very. Let me see if I can get this out. Okay, here's a piece of cardboard with the fabric glued to it. And here's my cross. Nobody's ever going to see the back. You don't have to have it professionally framed. Seriously. Okay, so then last year at Christmas, what I made was this. This is where I used up the majority of my beautiful mother of pearl buttons. Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? If I don't say so myself, I'm sorry. I get pretty excited about this kind of stuff. Do you guys like this kind of stuff? Who are my button collectors? I know there's quite a few of you guys that that watch um, this DIY dreaming. If you're a button lover or a button collector, say that in the comments so I know who those people are. Um, 
And tell me where you got your buttons. Did Are you one of those lucky people that inherited several jars of buttons from their grandmother? If you are, don't tell me because I'll be too envious to stay friends with you, especially if you got some really good ones. Okay, so here's my tree and I'm just gonna lay it into my frame. Put this little piece of wood back on it. You know that awful uh, marker at Goodwill that they write the prices on a lot of things? I can still see where I couldn't get it off. It was $3.93 for this frame. Okay, and look at this. I forgot completely this year, and I haven't put this out yet. So I'm going to put this out, hang it on the wall where it, the cross has been, and I'll put this one somewhere safe, and then after Christmas is over, I'll switch it back out again. Isn't that pretty? And I, I kind of layered them, and I tried to mix up the colors of the Mother of Pearl. And um, like this one, I got so lucky I had a button that was a triangle shape for the very top, and then I just glued one to the top of it. Yeah, start looking for buttons. Oh my gosh. Metal buttons. I mean, there's all kinds. I have a whole box of fun colored buttons too. And one year uh, at a garage sale, I found the most beautiful green buttons um, that I made one of those button bracelets with that I'll have to maybe dig that out in the near future and we can do a little DIY on that. But anyways, um, I hope this started you thinking about some things that you can do with silver platters with these inexpensive button magnets and they come in multiple sizes for the bigger buttons. I do recommend that you use these bigger ones. Dollar Tree has some smaller ones that work better for smaller buttons. And then with your choice of whatever kind of button you have, you can make some fabulous things using uh, the magnets or just using a little hot glue, you can make some pretty wonderful things that way too. And if you wanted to make something a gift for like, I don't know, your sister, your mom, your daughter, your daughter-in-law, your granddaughter, you could make it on a much smaller scale. It doesn't have to be this big, but it would be a family heirloom, seriously. Uh, let, okay, let me see what you guys are saying. My tree and cross pictures are beautiful. Thank you, Katie. Please DIY on button bracelets. Let's see if I have them here. I did at one point have them in my basket. They must be out in the kitchen. I don't know where they are right now. Uh, I am a serious <laughs> repurposer. I'm a lover of old things. I hate for stuff to go to the landfill. Um, like today, well, I've been trying to clean this uh, craft room out and I had some little, little bears. One of them had a dress on and one of them was just a little boy bear that I earned as an incentive when I was a creative memories consultant 25 years ago. Anyways, I had put them in the box to donate them to Goodwill because what am I going to do with them? And then my daughter-in-law was over and she is a special needs teacher and she works with a little girl that has two brothers and there were two boy bears. So I was so tickled when she said she would love to take them and give them to the children um, because I just couldn't stand the idea of those just going into a landfill. But if they're going to a child that will enjoy it, then I'm thrilled to send those on. So I love to repurpose things. Um, you could use jewelry as well. Oh, I meant to say that. So you could use old brooches, old, um, those big rings that were glued on or, you know, lightly melted onto bands. Don't use anything that's precious metal, obviously, or that's a super super sentimental to you thing. But if it's just sitting in a drawer and you're not getting any enjoyment out of it, why not um, make something that gives you 
lots of enjoyment, and that will become, I hope, a family heirloom. So I think I'm gonna stop yakking and answer some questions. What kind of paint did I use? Um, the paint that I used on mine is just, uh, I think it was chalk paint. Um, no specific brand. I've used all different kinds of things. I'm thinking that you could probably even use craft paint, but one thing I do want to tell you is to be sure that you clean your surface, your tray really well before you paint it and that it's completely dry. And then when you paint the black on, just know that you're going to have to do two, possibly three coats to get this good solid coverage. Um, yeah, so it's, it's not a special kind of paint. You can get paint that is magnetic that you could paint on a tray if it doesn't have those magnetic properties. Let me see, what are my other questions? Because I know I missed a bunch of them. Oh, okay, Sue says, I have a bunch of my grandmother's buttons. Oh, Sue, you have to make some things. Um, I don't know what your family situation is, but that would be such a treasure to pass on to the next generations. And you could just make some small little crosses in a beautiful frame or some small Christmas trees that people could bring out at Christmas time. Or you could put them on magnets and make some trays. I see a burlap question. Laurel, I'll answer that separately. I'll, I'll send you a message. You have a very long necklace button necklace of all colors. Well, Deb, that sounds wonderful. That's another great way to use buttons. I don't know if you still wear it. If you don't wear it, then you should cut it up and use it to make something. The bears could go to the children's hospital. Yeah, they certainly could. I just had them in a pile in the garage of things that I was going to try to either donate or force my daughter-in-law to take home with her today. Um, so I never throw anything away unless it's really. Okay, Terry says she loves the button idea. Oh, Martha. She says she has loads of antique buttons from her grandmother and she loves them. Martha, you need to make some stuff because I suspect that they're probably in some mason jars or Ziploc bags or a box somewhere hiding away in a set of drawers, a cabinet, a closet. Um, your grandmother's antique buttons, should they deserve to come out and to be made into something beautiful that you will treasure. And if you do it, Martha, I wanna see pictures for sure. Debbie says she started collecting buttons when her mother passed and you found them in her sewing room. Aw, that's sweet. My mom did give me a bunch of buttons that she had in her sewing basket. My mom's still living. Uh, but they, they weren't, there were a few gems in there, a few good ones in there, but they were mostly, um, I don't know, they were just different kind of buttons but I was still thankful to have them. And I've incorporated lots of those into my um, crafts. Okay, Andrea says that she loves buttons and she inherited many from a friend. And she sews, so she has lots. That's awesome. You are so blessed. What, okay, I already answered the paint color question. Hey, and if you wanna make something like this, if you're just hopping on, let me just reassure you, it doesn't have to be this kind of frame. It could be a frame that you pick up at Walmart. And then you can just make this part yourself. This is just cardboard with fabric on it. This is like a, like a, I don't even know what to call this. If you know what this kind of fabric is called, it's like a canvas that has some like flecks of different colors in it that I hot glued onto it and then I glued my buttons on it. So it doesn't have to be, it's not difficult. It doesn't have to be difficult. So you could use any kind of, oh, and lots of you guys are saying you wanna make button bracelets. Oh my gosh, I made button bracelets about uh, eight or 10 years ago, and I gave them to a lot of people in my life as gifts. 
And then I had a few um, teachers at my son's middle school that um, loved it and I made some for them. And it's fun. Uh, and I don't have any jewelry making skills. I just did what I thought would work. Ooh, Peggy says she has a lot of antique pins. You could do something lovely with those too and you could just put them into your fabric with the little uh, spike into the fabric so you wouldn't even have to glue them. You could make a heart, Dawn says. You could make a heart shape, a snowflake. Yeah, there's tons of things that you could do. A beautiful star is a great idea. Estate sales are a good place to find buttons. They absolutely are. So when you, I've been to several estate sales and things in there, the, the people that have real estate sales were the people of past and their children are cleaning out their house. Um, there's usually a lot of sewing stuff because that generation before us sewed. Um, but the few times I've been, they've already been purchased. Darn. So, and I'm not going to let somebody rob me uh, blind. Like at some antique places, they want like $15 for a little jar. And there's like, it's mostly crummy buttons that I could get today. Um, Oh, Jean says she's a button collector. You've even bought clothing at thrift shops just to get the cool buttons. Me too. All right, well, let's see. My mother-in-law has dementia, used to live with us, and we have all of her buttons in a jar she had. Oh, Sharon, I love that. You have to make something with those for sure. Okay, one more story. Linda says, I love buttons and I have a lot from my grandmothers. Also a box from my button factory. A button factory years ago. My, let's see if I can open this up. I don't know if it'll let me, it won't. Uh, but she had a longer part of the story to tell. So as soon as I hop off, you guys, I'll read all of your comments and um, I'll try to reply to whatever questions you might have. If you wanna know more, just go back to the beginning of this video and watch it on replay the whole way through because I talk about everything from start to finish. Um, that's easier for me so I don't have to explain everything and it's better for you too. So if you have questions, go back to the beginning of this video. It'll be available as long as there's internet and Facebook. It'll be in my videos and you can watch it on replay anytime you like. All right, one last thing. If you liked this, um, these projects, if you like the stuff that we do here at DIY Dreaming, like you like this, I love this. Um, then we do, we, do all, we do a huge variety of things. Then feel free to sprinkle any of my videos to your social media so your friends can find out and they can sprinkle it to their social media and their friends can find out. And that's really how this awesome community grows. Um, okie dokie. I can't wait to read all of your comments. Um, and those of you that inherited buttons from your mothers and grandmothers and family friends and all that, I just want to encourage you guys to bring them out to play and to be seen and enjoyed. All right. Have a great rest of your day. I will take pictures of these projects and I'll probably post those tomorrow morning here at DIY Dreaming and also we'll be doing Christ and Crafting tomorrow. So that I usually do between 2 and 5 p.m. Eastern time in the afternoon on Sunday. I am still not sure what I'm going to do. I'm, I keep thinking about talking about being created for a purpose. So we'll see. God will tell me sometime before tomorrow, sometime hopefully before two o'clock, <laughs> what we're to do. But I would love for you to join me for Christ and Crafting tomorrow as well. Okay, if you if you just got on late, go back to the beginning and watch the replay because this was this was fun for me to do, super fun. And I think those of you that watched it from the beginning um, enjoyed it too. Okay, have a great rest of your day. I'll see you guys tomorrow.